lovely people, my name is Erin and today I'm doing a book review on The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chankers. So if you've checked out my January TBR, which you should, I chose 10 books. One of them was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, and it was probably one of the ones I was most excited to read, and rightfully so, because I read it in about three days. Loved it. So what better way to gush about a book than do a review? I feel like this book has a lot of hype, but I, I still was so surprised by how good it was because I think a lot of the talk that I've seen talks about the plot but doesn't go into the amazing things that I found in this book. So hopefully I'll be able to show you just more reasons to pick up this book if you haven't already. All right, for my review, I have three different categories, character, plot, and world. I also have a bonus, you know, just in case something pops up that doesn't quite fit into anything or I feel like it deserves more points in an area. But we are going to start with characters. The characters are really a highlight. So let's take a closer look. I guess I should do a summary first. So you start out following Rosemary and Rosemary has some sort of secret that you don't really know what it is at the beginning, but she's trying to get as far away from where she is as possible. So she takes a job on a tunneling ship and these tunneling ships make wormholes to connect different planets and just, you know, make travel in space much easier. You meet this crew and travel with them. They got offered a job that seems a little dicey and uh, just kind of follow them through their space journey. So the main character is Rosemary. Rosemary is a human who's been living on Mars, a Mars colony. You do get the point of view of a lot of the other characters on this ship the farther you get into the book. I'm going to consider Rosemary my main character. Her role among the ship is very clear, but I'd say compared to the other characters, she is definitely outshone. There are huge personalities in this crew, and while she comes across as a very lovable... <laughs> Did I knock that over, please? While she comes across as very lovable, very good at her job, very helpful, and practical, very knowledgeable, I mean, you could say tons of you could say tons of good things about this character, but she's definitely underwhelming in comparison to some of the other main characters, which I think is totally fine, honestly. Like, she seems like a normal girl, and honestly, that was really enjoyable because it kind of gave you an anchor in the craziness that was this crew. She was a good way for us to learn about these different planets and different cultures because she was very fresh and new, had only lived on Mars, and so her role kind of gave us that same newbie inside as she was getting, which was very important. And I think having a more standard plane, I don't even know if I, I would say plane, but just, you know, a very normal character can sometimes be a negative, but I think in this book it really was kind of a calm in a chaos. I give her a three out of five for personality because I wasn't anything stand out, but I do think she served the role that she was put into, that she was written into, very well. Okay, <laughs> relationships. There are a lot of characters. So aside from Rosemary, we have Ashby, who is also a human. He's a captain of the ship. He has a very interesting relationship that you kind of learn about about halfway through, and I really loved his leadership style because it was firm but not mean or overbearing. He really felt like part of the crew. You have Sissix, who is Andrisk, and she is one of the pilots, and she's amazing. I love her. She seems like almost like the motherly figure of the ship. She comes from a species that is very touchy-feely. They're kind of just all over the place and very uh, sexually active. Seeing how her species interacts with humans was incredible but she does a good job of taking rosemary under her wing and she's just 
amazing. They have such a good friendship and relationship throughout this book. There are two mechanics, Kizzy and Jenks, who again have another great friendship and are super quirky, just come across as amazingly fun, like people you would want to party with. And outgoing, I imagine Kizzy just wearing like bright colors all the time and being super bubbly and lovable. Corbin, who is a human and he works on the algae that runs the ship, he's uh, not as fun, kind of the party pooper on the boat, but um, still comes around. I will, I will say he comes around. Dr. Chef, he's a different species. He is Grum, I believe, and he's, I, I can't quite get a clear picture of him in my mind. He seems very just kind of blobbish, but he's so wise and considerate. He works as both the chef and the doctor, hence the name Dr. Chef. Um, and again, you get to learn all about his species, but he is just so loving and his relationship with each of the characters really shows throughout the book in little ways. You get little moments of him where you're just, just grabs your heart and you want to see more of him. Ohan is the navigator. He's also a different species. He is Sinnet and the Sinat, Sinat, Sinat people um, pair up, their species pair up, and there's a lot going on there. The pairs are very interesting. Sinat's background and kind of culture, his belief system is very interesting. And then there's Lovey, who's the AI that guides the ship. So there are so many good relationships. There are about three or four romantic relationships that you get different looks into. Some of them you just get little glimpses of, some of you, you get really heartfelt and emotional glimpses of, some of you get the more romantic glimpses, but never too far. It doesn't really focus too much on the romance. It's just little snippets here and there, and it's the perfect amount in my mind. And this book is really all about the relationships. It is a found family book to its core, and I think you will love every friendship combination that exists in this book. So it is definitely a five out of five. Because I kind of already talked about all of the side characters and how amazing they are, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a five out of five right there as well. Because I I can't gush enough about these side characters. I wanted to be in this book so, so badly. I just want to be someone they love. They The way they loved each other made me want to be someone that they loved. So the last one for character is development. This is the first book in the series, so I didn't see a lot of development for our main character. There is some growth just in getting off world for the first time and really learning about space for the first time, putting her skills that she is, she's good at languages, Rosemary's good at languages, so putting those skills to use for the first time, kind of engaging with people instead of just practicing in the classroom. I don't think she has kind of that like central flaw that she has to overcome feel as far as development, so I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Alright, so that gives us 16 out of 20. What character? It's not a very good 6. Alright, so let's take a closer look at plot. I will say of these three categories, I think plot is probably the weakest point for this book, but mainly because it's kind of supposed to be one of those meandering journey feels. So. There is an overarching conflict that we'll talk about, but I don't think that should detract you. If you're someone who is a plot-driven person, I do think you would still thoroughly enjoy this book. The first subcategory is timeline and pacing. So while it is definitely a journey book, it doesn't feel like some of the ones that I've read where you just kind of are dying to get to the end and back to stuff happening. Um, I, I was engaged the entire time. I really had a feel of one thing to the next. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 5 out of 5. I think it's a great example of a book where a journey can be exciting the whole way through. The overarching conflict and action is them going to this job that is a little bit risky, and it's on the other side of space, basically, so they're taking a long time getting there. You have kind of two different things going on, the overarching, let's get to this job, what are our concerns with this job, do we think we're going to be okay, and space life along the way. So again, for action, I honestly liked the in-between journey part more than the final action. I think the final little bit was a little disappointing to me. I did feel like we had been traveling all this way, and then that conclusion happened pretty quick. The character stuff 
that happened during that finale was really, really good. But the action and conflict piece of it just felt a little bit over and done with fast. And I think that was one of my very few only issues with this book is that I want to just like give me another chapter, give me a little bit more about what's happening here. So I am going to give this a four out of five. I love the journey. The con the ending was really, really good. Aside, I, I just could have used a little bit more action film feel, if that makes sense. And the same can be said for satisfaction and buy-in. I loved each little piece and I think things were resolved so thoroughly throughout every little secret and reveal to get closure for them. I'm going to give it probably a three out of five for conflicts, just because the things we've talked about already, the little conflicts were solved really well and felt great, but the final conflict did not feel as satisfying to me. I think given the depth that were that was put into each world that we saw, it felt just like another stop. Each world that we got off on, we got to see a bits of the culture, bits of the species that inhabit it. You got to see little interactions and little tidbits of conversation. And so I expected kind of that finale to get more than what we had got throughout. It was really just the same. You didn't get any more interaction or any more information. It felt like just another stop. It didn't feel like a finale. I wanted more detail. I wanted more in depth. I wanted more. I can't say I wanted more consequences because I think the consequences were done well, but I just wanted more information. So I'm going to give this a three out of five. 16 out of 24 plots. I actually wouldn't have guessed that, but I feel like this is very accurate. So, okay. World building. Amazing. Just honestly, amazing. Like I'm expecting near perfect scores here because you get such a good look at the galaxy. You feel like you've traveled to these places. You feel like you know the species. And at the same time, you don't feel, I never felt like there was a big info dump. There are definitely times where you're getting a lot of information, but you wanted it. Lore, I'm gonna give probably a four out of five. One of the things that you get in the lore and kind of the history of the planets are, um, the history of some of the warring worlds, you get the belief system of the Sinat characters, and that really plays a big role, and you actually end up kind of questioning those beliefs, and it felt so intense. There were some hard decisions made based on this belief system that I struggled with myself. Could have done with a little bit more just because I found it all so fascinating and I would have happily taken just like a insert at the back that told me about each society. So I think that may just be like the nerd in me and hopefully in future books we'll get to see that even more. You don't want everything right at the beginning so I'm gonna give this a four out of five. Backstory. You do learn about Rosemary's backstory, why she's trying to get away, and while it seems like a major thing and there is a good little bit of a chapter dedicated to this. It is kind of lost, I think, in the overarching story, but I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. You also get backstories on a lot of the other characters as well, kind of explaining who they are, how they became this way, why they act the way that they do. So you slowly discover more and more about each character as you go. Some of them are really surprising, and some of them just break your heart a little bit. Um, and gosh, I love learning about every single one of them. I think Corbin was maybe the most surprising and Dr. Chef was maybe the most heartbreaking, was maybe the hardest to hear. Um, but they were all so good. All so good. So I think that is something you will definitely enjoy. And I'm giving it a five out of five. Okay, society. You definitely get a good look at society. There are times where the book just dedicates itself for the f a few pages to looking at the hierarchy of world where humans stand compared to Andrus and whether AI should be considered a full citizen, whether genetic modifications are good or bad, and where people who have been forced to have genetic modifications stand compared to people who choose them. You'll be reading along and getting this beautiful look at this planet and the action happening and all of a sudden there's an interaction that just 
dives right into these hard questions and then brings you right back. I truly loved that piece of it. So obviously a five out of five there. Um, same thing with the culture. You get a look at um, Sissix. Sissix is the Indorisk that is very big on touch. They're constantly just hanging on each other and being around each other and cuddling with each other. And so there are several times throughout the book where it's brought up how she is holding herself back to, for the sake of her human traveling companions, because for them, her laying in their lap or wrapping her arms around them or nuzzling them, for her, that's a normal part of everyday society. For them, it can be uncomfortable if they don't feel that connection with her or if they're in public. And so you get these two very clashing cultures and ways of life. She's holding herself back for the sake of her humans and for her companions. And why is she willing to do that? And how does that affect her? Um, and how is she different when she's back among her own people? And so, again, it was, I mean, it was just great. It was wonderful and it made you think, but in a really fun, exciting, interesting way. And I, I cannot speak highly enough to the society and culture pieces of this and the depth that it goes into while still feeling very lighthearted and fun overall as a book. Very close to perfect, a 19 out of 20. I am going to give it a bonus, actually probably two. I'm going to give it two bonus points and one for the society and culture because I think it is so, so, so well done and one for side characters because they are just one of the best groups in a book that I've seen. Let's get that total. So the long way to a small anger planet ends up with a 53 out of 62, which I think probably the highest rating I've given with this in-depth review. I can't remember what World War Z got. It may be up there as well, but it's definitely a five-star book. It was thoroughly enjoyable. I cannot wait to get my hands on book number two and I am begging you all to read this and then come back to the comments and just tell me that you loved it too <laughs> because I need other people to love this book. So yeah, if there is a book that you put on your list this year and if you have not read this beauty, pick it up. Pick it up. It's going to make 2021 feel better. It was a great way to start this year as far as reading goes and some of the goodness of this book definitely seeps into your life and uh, just leaves you feeling better about things maybe more hopeful I don't know but that is all for today I will see you next time hope you're getting some sunlight hope you're staying healthy bye guys <laughs>